Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss one simple but very powerful technique to debug a stored procedure or to capture log in each stage for a particular stored procedure in Snowflake. Okay, so ideally there is no direct way to capture the logs or something, but obviously we can technically create a framework which will surely help you for debugging purpose or to capture the logs, okay? And without any further delay, let's see the framework, right? So I'll be providing the codes in the description box or in the comment section. If you want, you can go through that. So first step, what we are doing, we are dropping a database Ramu if exist, then creating the fresh database and using that database, okay? So here, if I execute all three, here it is all the statements executed successfully. So if I refresh this particular page here, you will see, Ramu database is created with information schema which contain all the metadata information and the public schema which one we can use to store tables, views or different other objects. Okay, right. Now here the approach is very simple for logging or debugging purpose. Okay, that is we are going to store the logs in a particular table. So for that what we are doing, create or replace log storer so the table name is log storer which is containing execution time as first column and the log message okay if you want you can customize this particular table and add some other columns based on your requirement okay so here basically i can execute this particular one here it is successfully created if i refresh this page here you will see that in public schema in ramu database log storer is successfully created okay then here what i am doing here i created a stored procedure okay create or replace procedure captured log okay so this particular stored procedure will take the message which is basically kind of log which you want to store in that log capture table okay or log storer table okay and then what we are doing we are taking the message string returning is also string language is javascript all we are doing first we are getting the current timestamp in that particular timestamp when the log is generated also creating one insert query okay which will insert the message as well as timestamp in the log storer table as you can see here it is having that schema which is containing execution time and message same thing we are creating here okay so by the default format of the javascript snowflake stored procedure concept we are creating that we are getting the current timestamp and then we are creating one insert query insert into log storer table and values is basically time information and as well as the message okay and then here let me execute this particular stored procedure here it is successfully created okay and then here suppose this is our original procedure which we want to debug or basically we, for which we want to capture the logs okay how you can utilize that earlier stored procedure it is very simple just try to understand it create or replace stored procedure my test suppose anything any random stored procedure you have created and that on that you want to add the logging functionality okay so what i am doing return string language javascript as this particular part as it is and then here i am creating a function okay because this particular stored procedure we are going to call again and again whenever we require to store the log okay just we need to call the stored procedure that's it right if we want to execute one particular code again and again then better put that in a function same thing we have done here function log msg here basically we are putting that message and then here we are calling that stored procedure and creating the snowflake statement and then executing that that's it okay this particular function is nothing but what it is doing it is calling this particular stored procedure which is actually inserting the log in the table log storer what we created right very simple and then here this is our main code okay so here we are going to see how we can call this particular function okay so suppose var x equal to 10 by 10 we are doing some divide operation like that any mathematical operation you might be computing and then suppose you want to store some log okay so here this is the first example where we are calling the function okay so log log this message so this particular string will be stored in that particular uh, table okay log storer table okay then here we are taking the x value we are converting to string and that one also we want to store in the log table also we are just trying to store another log this is another log message okay and then printing 
all logs successfully captured okay even this particular function able to catch the error and that it will store in that log storer okay like see here catch try catch block we have created like as you know in programming it is always better you use try catch block so in catch suppose in this particular place you did certain operation for which some exception is generated then it will be going to catch block that error part also we can basically store inside our log storer table okay also we can return the error right so this is the uh, stored procedure so if i execute that now and then if we call this particular stored procedure here you will see it is taking some time and all log captured basically it is returning this particular statement and now if i execute select star from log storer what you will see you will see here all the logs are stored okay see here we have called our log function so log this message it is stored one time then here x equal to x dot two string so 10 by 10 is nothing but one so x equal to one is stored okay then here another time we are calling that right that is this is another log message so it is also getting captured okay so this is how you can store the log message at each stage of your stored procedure okay just you can create a table log storer and then you can create a stored procedure which will make an insert query with current timestamp or if required you can customize this and add some other columns if required and then here in our actual stored procedure you can create a function which will call the earlier stored procedure and this function you can use wherever you require to capture the logs okay so now let me show you how it is handling the exception okay so just for demo purpose i am artificially creating one particular exception suppose var m equal to sum 2 comma 3 okay so sum is a function which is not defined okay so now let me create or replace this particular stored procedure my test and then let me call my test okay so here you will see that see reference error sum is not defined sum function which you are trying to refer it is not defined okay so anyway it, it this particular stored procedure has returned us this particular error due to this particular line because we are returning that error but if we see this particular select star from log storer you will see here also the log is captured okay so if you see that here first log this message here see log this message is stored then x equal to plus x dot two string that is 10 by 10 is nothing but 1 so x equal to 1 is also stored this is another log message which is also stored and after that when we are querying this that time it is unable to find the sum function it is going to catch block which is generating error and then we are storing that error in the log function okay we are calling log function to store that error right so you are seeing here reference error sum is not defined okay so this is how in this kind of way you can capture the logs which will help you for debugging purpose okay and why i am calling that particular actual stored procedure which is making an insert query inside one function because this is how you should write a clean code right one thing if you are using multiple times then better to put inside a function otherwise if you don't you create this kind of function you have to write this kind of three statement again and again to call the capture log stored procedure which we created here right so this is one way there can be multiple ways to capture the logs in a particular table or in some other way you can store in an array or an or in an object and you can return that object as part of the return statement of this particular stored procedure there can be multiple ways not at all an issue but suppose you want to store for future reference for debugging purpose or something then one particular way is this one which I have explained and all this course I will be providing in the description box or in the comment section. If you want you can go through that, customize this, play with it. Okay. So this is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful then please like, share and comment, subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.